Hi there, welcome to Elm Colors, I'm Erica. On today's video, we are going to be doing the next letter in our How, our How I Color Alphabet series, letter T, and T is for trees. So I do have a few samples to show you, um, some that I've colored, some that I found that I thought maybe I would work on today. Uh, we'll, we will see. So the first one I wanna show you is in Rita Berman's, this one, <laughs> the one where it's all the seasons, that's her compilation season book. And I found this um, page and I thought that was really cute. I know that in the fall one, there is um, one similar to that, but I don't know if it's in this, yeah, see? And there's the one for the fall too. So, but I thought I maybe, maybe that one would be one that I could work on today. But these, this book is full of trees. So depending on, you know, what kind of trees you're going for, lots and lots of tree pictures. Um, but yeah, I really like, I thought that one would be really cute. So that's a possibility that I will work on today. This book uh, by Ursula Schwab is another one that has just chock full of uh, tree pictures. I do have one colored in here. Uh, this one here. We can see I've, the, the trees in the background. And then, so in this book, I really liked both um, this one and this one. And this one would be kind of a different tree that we could work on instead. Um, but yeah, I just thought both of those pages were really cute. Okay, so now for some examples of things that I uh, have done. So there is a page in here that I did. This one, I think this was a base with um, nail colors or possibly ink tents. And then I went over top with some pencils to get some of the shading in there. Uh, but I really like that tree. I think it's cute. Uh, Romantic Country is another one that's going to have tons of trees. I mean, you can already see them on the cover. In this book, I tend to do the trees a little more um, cartoony, I guess, would be the right description. So, for example, here you do I do have a little bit of shading on these evergreen trees, but it's not like super detailed or anything. I have seen people do really detailed trees in these books, but I don't. I don't do that in here. So you can see here again, a little bit of shading, but nothing, nothing super. So like this one is just a couple of different colors of ink tents blended together. And then that's it. There's no other shading or anything on there. Uh, I have a little bit of texture in a couple of places, but usually it's just those colors blended together and um, going from there. I don't think I have any other trees colored in this book yet, but, uh, there was one in here that I thought I would, uh, maybe tackle. We might work on that one today too. Uh, let's see. So in this one, Kirby has tons and especially in this worlds within worlds, because there's lots of worlds. So, you know, you've got trees kind of basically everywhere. There was one, where did that lion one go? This one was really cool. So the whole mane is made up of trees. Um, cactuses are sort of trees, right? They're just really tall plants. That's what trees are too. But So there's some cactuses I did. Uh, and then the other things that I've started in this book are all trees, evident, uh, um, actually. So I've got this one started. I've got the trees started in this on this page. And then I have this front cover uh, started as well. So I might work a little bit on that one too. I have lots of options of things to work with, work on today, but I'm not sure exactly <laughs> which one I'm going to go with yet. Uh, so one of my favorite trees that I've ever done is in this book. This is Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. And this is my tree. I love it. I spent forever trying to get really good texture on the bark and making sure that all the trees in the background were like magical and fun and um yeah i was really really pleased with the way that this ended up turning out uh i'm gonna hold it a little closer so you can see some of the texture so all of that texture was all put in by me and uh yeah uh that's one of the nice things about some of johanna's trees is they she has it, she has a little bit of texture here and there, like on the, this tree branch here, there's texture. But if you go to some of the other, where's that other? Yeah, so on this one, the most that you have are these few lines here. 
So then I think I kind of went from that and just went and created this gorgeous tree. And I love it. And the background as well, I really like. Um, let's see, I've got another tree in here. I've got that one that I did. And this is a whole, again, a whole book just chock full of trees. Um, this one, depending on how I feel, could be another one that we could do some work in because there's a couple of tree pages. Oh, where's that other one? Well, I mean, it's Enchanted Forest, so there's going to be tree pages. <laughs> uh, but there's that one. Then on this one, this one is another one that I was considering doing some work on with this tree. Um, depending on how much time we have, but I wanted to show you guys uh, this one, this page on this side. Uh, these trees in the background were all drawn in. So this is all like, uh, you know, I watched YouTube tutorials on how to get the right texture and the, draw the trees in and make sure that the branches look and everything looked cool. And I wanted it to look like the trees were kind of far away and these shrubs and stuff were closer. Uh, and I really, really do enjoy the way that this ended up looking. It was a lot of work, uh, and it's not something that I will probably be doing today. Um, but that is always an option. You can always add in your own trees to different things as well. Uh, I do have, I don't have it with me right now. In one of my, uh, recent Reptiloids pages, I did a little bit of a, like a, it's almost like an abstract tree background with my markers. So that's an option as well. So you can do it where it's, you know, detailed and whatever, or you can do it where it just kind of gives the, the hint of trees. So, um, so yeah, that is, those are all my samples and, and uh, examples and stuff. Johanna Basford is always a good one for trees. Uh, like I said, Kirby has some good ones and then Aerie. So uh, we will be coloring a page, maybe two, depending on how I feel, from a couple of different um, artists. And I'm going to try to use a couple of different mediums as well. We will see how that goes. But let me get my stuff together and then we will get started. Okay, so I think we're going to get started in Worlds Within Worlds. So I'm going to work a little bit on these front pages. Um, I've already got one layer of ink tents down. I believe it's ink tents. I think that's what I used. Uh, I'm going to zoom you guys in so that you can see what I'm working or how I'm doing this. And... Uh, Hang on just a sec. The nice thing about Kirby's books is he has a lot of the detail already drawn in for where you need to put your darkest colors. So I have, um, again, I think ink tents in the background. I've grabbed a couple of Prismacolors. I've got light umber and dark brown, and I'm just going to go over where the shadows are already drawn in. So it's super simple. I'm gonna put my darker color in the darkest areas. And you can tell where those are supposed to be because Kirby actually has the like the thicker lines kind of in there. And I don't even know if I'm going to need this other color. This is really probably can just use this one color. But um, for me, trees really break down into you know the two parts. You have the, the bark and then the branches and the leaves. So you can really, it, the colors are only limited to your imagination. As long as you kind of give it some texture, it will look tree-like, no matter what color you use. So you can see I'm really just very quickly getting large chunks of this done. I don't know why I didn't do that part. And so here where I've missed a little bit of the... tree, I'm going to go back over with my pencil, my other color. Yeah, I just wanted to get a little bit done around this guy so you can kind of see. And this one, like I said, Kirby books, 
they seem so intimidating when you look at them. You're just like, there's no way I'm ever, ever, ever going to finish all of that. But then when you really break it down into smaller sections, they're easy to color and uh, they've, you know, you've got your guidelines in there. So you just kind of already know where you need to put your shadows and stuff. Okay, let me get some in here. And if there are areas of the tree that you want to be not so dark, if you don't want to make your shadows quite as dark, you can use this lighter color, but I don't really think this is this is working out well for me so far. Yeah, this light number here where I've forgotten a little bit. The other thing you could do is if you have spaces like that where you don't have any color, you can always go in with another fun color, like a if you use a green or you know a blue purple, pink, depending on the the level of, uh, you know, fantastical you want on your page. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's just limited by your imagination and that's it. You can do whatever colors you want. Okay, so yeah, you can just see in that little bit. So back behind it, this guy here, I am gonna grab another color. I'm gonna grab a darker brown. So I've got, let's see, I'm gonna grab this dark, real dark brown. So this is my sepia. I'm gonna do one layer really quickly over everything with my dark brown. And then one more in the dark shadows with that sepia. And that's really gonna let you know that that is definitely deep dark shadows back there. All right, switching back to my dark brown again just to get the rest of these little guys shaded in. Add a little bit of this light brown in here. Okay, so yeah, so that is basically it. I, I would just go through the rest of this entire page doing that exact same thing. Uh, just adding a little bit of this brown color here and there where I feel like it needs it. Um, pretty much wherever he's got a line drawn in is where I would add in that texture. Sorry, I keep seeing places I want to add more color. <laughs> that always happens when I start these. Because then I'm like, ooh, I can do this really quick, and I can get this done, and I can do that. And this is one I've had as a whip for quite a while, so I really do need to get this one finished up. Yeah, so there you go. So that is, that is really quick and easy. Kirby trees. Super, super easy to do. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next book. All right, the next book is from Romantic Country, uh, this one here. And I thought I would work a little bit on this page. I was going to show you really quickly just kind of how I do the bark with ink tents. I'm going to fill in the leaves, and then I'm going to do a, just a little bit extra and, and kind of show you how I would make the tree look a little fuller. So I'm really quickly just going to use, I'm using Saddle Brown, and I'm going to use some dark chocolate as well. And I'm going to pay a little bit of attention to where my light source is on this one. So I have my light source down here at the bottom. So all of the stuff along the bottom of the branches is going to be more, is going to be uh, lit up. And then the top part of the branches is going to be in shadow. So that's why I've got these two colors. Uh, but I'm going to go through first and... Um, get this saddle brown down and then add in my dark chocolate and activate that. And I'm going to speed that up so you guys can see, uh, how I do that. But, um, it's pretty, you've seen me use these before. So I'll do a little bit, um, 
Sorry, I have to get my backer page in here. I forgot to put that in. Why are you, there you go. Um, yeah, so I'll do this little branch down here first so you guys can see. So I'm just gonna really quickly color this saddle brown color on here. Super quick. And then I'm gonna use this uh, dark chocolate color and anywhere where two branches kind of come together, we'll get a little bit of extra dark. And then along the edges back here, we'll get a little bit darker. Get this all the way in there. So you can see a little bit of that shading already. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna grab a water brush. I do have to turn my book just a little bit. You can see I'm just getting that right in there. Grab my, clean off my brush a little bit. Bring that chocolate out this way. And if, uh, since I'm kind of pushing the color that way, that, that means that the color, even like the regular color, is going to be lighter on this side and darker on that side. So when you have a darker color on that side as well, it makes that shadow even more so. Okay, sorry, a little bit more turning on the book there, just so I can get the right angle. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this top branch and then when we come back, um, I will have, I'll do some of the leaves as well for you guys to see. So I will talk to you again here in a second. So the branches are all done. So now I'm gonna use some greens for the leaves. And again, I'm just gonna go through this pretty quickly. Um, I've got beach green. Um, oop, that's not the right green. Okay, I've got beach green, iron green, and field green, and um, I'm thinking that this is kind of like a, a summer, a nice summer evening, and um, so these, these leaves are gonna be bright green. So I'm gonna start with my field green, and then I'm gonna add in a little bit of the beach on top, and then a little bit of the iron, uh, away from my light source. So this is kind of how it's going to look, just so you guys can get an idea. So there, so that's what it, all the leaves are going to look like. And I'm going to go through and do that really quick. And then I will be back with you guys again.
leaves are all done. Branches are done. Uh, I'm going to use my Prismacolors again. Uh, I could go in with just my Intense and add some shading, but it doesn't really need a whole lot because I did a little bit of work ahead of time. So the only thing that I'm really going to do is I'm going to use my dark brown and I'm going to add just a little bit more uh, in the corners where branches meet. I always darken those areas up um, where this bow might create a little bit of shadow back here where this branch would be darker. And anywhere where uh, the artist has added in texture lines, I'm going to just go over that a little bit and extend. So I'm going to go over the line and then I'm going to extend past the line with a lighter touch so that my pencil line gets smaller and thinner as I move away from that line. Okay, so again, I've got the line here and then I'm going to extend just a little bit just so it kind of resembles more of a wood grain tone. Just kind of follow what like a normal wood grain shape would be. That might be something that I could add to the The How I Color series, too, is a wood grain. Because that's a, sometimes that can be a tricky one, but it's it's one that I like to do. It is a time-consuming one because you do have to work in layers sometimes, but when you have, like, a base layer down like this, it's not quite as daunting because then you already have, like, the main color down, so you don't have to pay too much attention. Um, the nice thing about sometimes about wood grain is, um, or like bark and stuff, is when you use a base layer. So if I come in here with this, um, these ink tents, or if I would have used like a, a watercolor marker, uh, things that could have a tendency to streak, um, it is... It just adds to the texture, so it's okay to have that, that streakiness in there. Okay, I think that that is all I'm gonna do for that. Okay, so now the leaves, I'm not gonna shade the leaves anymore, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna add like background leaves. So on, on a color along that I did previously in this book, if I can find it. So on this page, I did it, I added leaves into the background to make this, this arbor look fuller. So that's kind of the same thing that I'm going to go for with this. Not nearly as many leaves, but uh, I am going to add more leaves in. So I'm going to start down here with these ones. And I've pulled uh, colors from Prismacolor. I've got dark green, grass green, and sap green light. And I'm basically going to draw like a shadow leaf behind this other leaf. So. I'm going to start where the leaf um, starts. I'm going to come out to the side a little bit more and then angle back in so that it looks like there's a little leaf peeking out behind the other one. I might not even use these ones. Maybe I'll use this one to tone it down a little. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be what I'll do. And so I'm basically going to do that same thing throughout the tree. Uh, and that just makes the it just makes it look a little fuller. Um, I do tend to you can I do tend to go in the same direction. So if I'm starting on this side, I usually go on that side. But with the way that I messed, <laughs> I got a little messy right here on this leaf. So I'm gonna come out this way first, and then do my little leaf there, and then on this side I'll go out this way. And you can curve the leaf a little bit, um, give it a little bit more shape instead of just like a straight point. That one I messed up again there. Let's just curve that out. There we go. So it's basically going to be 
this. So I'm just going to go around for the rest of the page. I'm going to add in some more leaves. And since the background is light enough, I can just go right over top of what I've already done. Now, if I had done like a really dark background, I would have probably needed to do my leaves beforehand, but since it's a light background, we're good to go. So yeah, so I'm just gonna go through and do that, and then I will talk to you guys again here in a second. So there you go, that's what it would look like with all of the um, additional leaves added in. I did add a few little leaves um, around the bow here. I added a couple of extras, like if uh, a branch ended and there was nothing there, I put a little leaf on it. Uh, oops, I forgot to do one here, so I will add that one right here. And then, so I used the um, grass green and then went over with the light sap green just to kind of tone down the brightness of the grass green. So yeah, that is, that is how I will do that. Now when I do the vines here for the swing and the little flowers um, around the ribbon on the basket, I'll probably add in some more um, leaves to that as well. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Now I, I did want to talk about these little trees back here. So I'm just going to do these with some... Um, yeah, with some Prismacolors really quick. Goodness, I couldn't think of the word. Uh, and I've just got, so in my hand I have the spring green, the grass green, and the dark green. And um, again, you're gonna, when I, when I go to color this in, I'm gonna pay attention to where the shadows and the light source is coming from. So on this tree, since the sun is in the center here, all of this side of the tree is gonna be bright. And the same with these guys over here. And then I will shade on this side. And this is just a quick layer, really. And then I'll go back through and make it look a little bit better. But uh, And then the last color would be the shadow color back here. And then I'll go back through and blend that out a little bit. But when I do like the, the trees in this book, I tend to make them definitely more cartoony. It's not, I don't typically do a lot of realism on my trees only because I know how long it's going to take <laughs> from that Johanna Basford page that I did. And it's just, it's just easier to just make them look cute, give them a little bit of shading and be on your way. So yeah, so that is, that's kind of how I would do that with adding in the little leaves and stuff. And like I said, Eerie books are ones that I usually do that too. I'll, I'll add a lot of uh, leaves in behind things in her books. So, okay, let's move on to the next page. All right, this next one is in Worlds of Wonder. This is by Johanna Basford, and this is the tree that I want to work on today. This uh, page, I started this, I think it was for another How I Color alphabet video. This is what's the H is for house. And so I kind of wanted to work on this one a little bit. I do want to finish this page at some point. Uh, and when I saw this page initially, I had seen it as an autumn scene. So we're going to do a little bit of a fun um, marker blend on the tree here to get the look. Because I did use marker on the house and the like the roof. I think a couple other places around and then I shaded with Prismacolors. So we're going to, we're going to attempt some uh, marker blends here. So I have a, let's first do the, the trunk and this is just going to be a basic brown. So I've got this uh, Tombow 977 and I'm just going to very quickly add in the color there. And like I said, the streakiness is going to help add that texture. So it's okay to have that in there. Okay, and then how do I want, 
she didn't really so I'm gonna add in some roots there because there wasn't really a an end but that kind of seems like how it would be so okay there we go all right that is done now I'm gonna use a couple of different colors I've got Unfortunately, these are all different brands. <laughs> so uh, I have one from the Artist Loft, which is from a, um, I think it's a Michaels store, which is a craft store here. Uh, this is a yellow, it's called it's Canary Yellow. And then I have a Tombow 133, which is a nice yellowy green. Then I have this Brushables, this Zig Brushables um, marker. This is Apricot, I think. Yeah, Apricot. It has a light and a dark color on it and then I have this recollections marker this is also from Michaels and this is in sepia so I'm going to see what I can do with these now my plan is to have a nice blend from a green all the way through to that darker spicy orange color so I'm going to start with the greens and I'm actually going to just pick a couple spots where I want my greens to be and I'm just going to plot out where I think that they should go and let's get we'll get some color in there okay and then around that I'm gonna add this yellow I'm gonna be careful about going over top of the color that I've already put down I don't want it to be too um, saturated and uh, I don't want the paper to start peeling up so I'm gonna extend that yellow out a little bit Okay, put my lids back on. Now let's do some of this. So I'm gonna start with my lighter orange. I'm just gonna blend that in and I'm just barely touching the tip of the marker to the paper. So you can kind of see some of, oops, well, that's okay. You can kind of see that I, I'm leaving some white spaces here and there and that's okay because it's gonna be I think I want a little bit of green and yellow over here too. So I'm gonna add a little bit there. And then I'm gonna add this orange. Okay. All right, let me add in this darker orange now. I don't wanna completely cover up the orange that I put in there, but Definitely that darker orange is going to be in the darker areas. Now this is a complete experiment that I was hoping would work, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right, and then the recollections, this is the sepia, so it's like a nice spicy orange color. And again, I'm just kind of adding the color where I think I want some. I don't really have like a game plan in mind. Oops, that probably wasn't quite right, but that's okay. So once I get this base layer down, I'm going to go through again. I'm just going to keep layering with the markers. I'm going to need to let this dry a little bit before I go back in. Uh, I'm going to go in with this lighter orange color and hit some places where I know that that color needs to go back in. Okay. Okay, let me grab this yellow. And I'm just kind of hitting that wherever there's white showing through the page. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of this green color in, but I'm just going to kind of pounce it around again. Okay, so it looks kind of messy, but now we're going to go in with some pencils and uh, fix it right up. So let me grab those really quick. Okay, so I've got my colors here. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'll go through the colors with you guys here. So we've got uh, Chartreuse, which is PC989. 
I have Apple Green, which is PC912. I have Lemon Yellow, PC915. Yellow Orange, PC1002. And Pumpkin Orange, PC1032. And I'm going to use these colors to kind of blend everything together a little bit better. So I'm going to use this chartreuse color to get this green blended into the yellow a little bit. Uh, oh, gosh darn it. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to need the, the yellow, actually. I probably won't. Okay, uh, a little bit of the apple green, just kind of in the darker areas where I've got that green already. And you can kind of create your own shapes in within the tree too. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to switch between these colors now. I might need an actual orange too. So let me grab my regular orange. Where are you? There you are. I'm going to start with the yellowed orange and see if I can just... So this is really just about kind of blending that together as best you can. Uh, one thing I love about fall trees is the fact is how many colors can actually be in one tree at one time. Just, it makes me happy every time I see it. All right, I am gonna use a little bit of yellow right in here. Because that's going straight from the the orange into the green and that's not it's not my favorite okay I like that let me do the pumpkin now I'm gonna so I'm starting where the darkest color is for this um, marker and then I'm just kind of extending that color outwards so it's a little bit of a softer blend instead of just like a harsh dot. color up here a little bit. Okay, and use that orange now just around the outside edge. Try to fill up the white space that I still have left there. Okay, uh, I might add a little bit darker color. Let me grab my, let's see if this terracotta will work. I just want it a little darker underneath some of these areas where it would definitely be in shadow. Okay, I think that'll do it. There we go. It's a nice little tree. We need to do the... <laughs> Need to do the branches, don't we? Or not the branches, the bark. And this will probably just be a one pencil job. So I've got my dark brown here. I'm gonna add in the shadow where, on the trunk, where the dark brown would go, or where the shadows would go. Then again, anywhere where the there are two branches that come together, or split apart, I guess I should say. Uh, you wanna add a little bit of extra darkness there. So like in this V right here. And then anywhere where you want to add in a little bit of extra detail you can. I'm just going to add in a little shadow here and here. And then we're going to go... So this part here would be in shadow. Let's see right there. 
here. This is where we kind of created those roots. So again, I have a darker area right in there. Okay, I am gonna I, I am gonna use this light brown. So this is a light number. Now I'm just gonna kind of I'm just drawing random lines on the tree and filling in any white areas. And when you do tree grain or wood grain, you don't have straight lines, that's for sure. Okay, just extending that color out a little, or that root out a little bit further. Uh, let me get this a little bit filled in. And then one more maybe. Get a little bit of shadow underneath the line there. Can use that dark brown again too to come in with some lines to create some more wood grain. There we go. And that's our tree. That's our little fall tree. I think that's going to be cute. Now I did go over in a couple spots um, with the marker, but that's easily covered up. I can cover that up with a background or I can do, you know, a white Posca and then cover up with the background too. So, so yeah, so there is our tree number, what is that? Page number three that we did. Yeah. And I think that's going to be really cute to have these nice, this variety of like orange and yellow leaves across the roof, probably some orange and yellow down in these shrubs and the plants and stuff hanging around. So yeah, so that is that one. Let me grab the next one. Okay, our last page is gonna be in this Rita Berman book. This is the one that is the um, Walk Through All the Seasons, I believe is what it's basic loosely translated as. Uh, and we're gonna do this page because I thought it was super cute. Very, um, very spring-like, matches the weather today actually. So uh, I was going to use some uh, soft pastels and then some pencils on top. So I think that's that's gonna be my plan. Uh, and I don't know if I'll do the whole page with you guys today. We will have to see how long this takes. So first I'm gonna lay down my pastels. So I have some of these cotton pads here and I have my colors for my pastels off to the side. I know I want um, I want that area to be kind of purplies, so maybe this side could be pinks. Let's try that. I'm gonna go in actually with this bright neon pink. Let's see kind of how that looks. Okay. And then I know I want the purple, so let me grab this purple one that I already have ready. I'm gonna use this light purple. And not fill in where the... I could probably bring some of that pink over into the purple. I think that would look kind of cool. Okay, um, then we've got, let's see what other colors. So I think a turquoisey kind of tree would be cute. So let's do that since I already have this color here. So we'll do this turquoise color, which is, I believe, I think it's this one. I hope it's that one. Uh, let's do that one. Yeah, let's do that one here. So I'm gonna try to avoid the center part there as best I can. Okay. do some greens so I need yeah I'm gonna do a little bit of yellow first and then I'm gonna kind of blend that into 
um, the green that it's going to be over here. So I've got that one there. That works. Okay, so now we need some greens. I'm going to get, I'm going to grab this neon green. Oop, that's got some other color on it. And just, that is real light. <laughs> This is a fast, fast way to get this, these uh, trees on here too, or to get the color on here. Okay, so now we need a little bit of a, let's do a darker, let's do this yellowy green here. Let's get that. It's not quite dark enough, but a little bit darker. There we go. Okay, and then going this way, I've got like a turquoise color, but now I need to go into my greens. So I think we're just gonna go, I'm gonna grab my Let's just do this. So we've got this green color. We'll bring that green into the turquoise a little bit. Extend that out this way. Grab a little bit darker green. And again, the nice thing about um, the chalk pastels is if I get it someplace where I don't really want it, I can go back in and erase. Okay, and then the last one, I think it's just gonna be this really dark, dark green here. This is almost like a turquoisey green too. It's super dark. Okay, so those are our trees. Done. Well, not done, but I got the base layer down, so now we can go in with some pencils and, and play and stuff. I'm going to erase a little bit. I'm going to clean up, so basically I'm just going to use my Derma Electric Eraser, which I am running out of eraser on. <laughs> I need to find my replacement erasers, uh, but just clean up a little bit in between trees if I want to. All right, I have my colors pulled. I have a tiny little swatch here so I know what my colors actually look like. And I'm just gonna start adding some uh, detail in here. So I'm just going to go over the places where there is a little bit of a, an area to fill in. And I'm gonna start filling stuff in. Like it's not... Yep. And then I can add in a little bit of shading if I want to, like along the trunk here. Just to kind of give it a little bit more depth. That'll work. I'm gonna use this mint color to shade on this one. A little bit of this greeny yellow color still here. Okay, use the mint here. So we're gonna do some of these circles. I'm not really sure what I wanna do here, so I'm just kind of going with whatever feels right. <laughs> like there's no rhyme or reason to my shading, really. I'm just adding in places where it looks like it would need some shading, if that makes any sense. corner here and then yeah and then I'm gonna shade along this edge a 
I'm gonna go ahead and color those all in. Maybe a little bit right here. Maybe this light green will work in the yellow. Yeah, that works. And extend some of this color into this side too. Shade a couple of places here and there. I don't want solid color all the way through. Yeah, so most of this is just going to be me kind of trying to figure out where I want that shading to go. Okay, so that color was mid-brown and now I'm just going to go in with my brown earth and add in a little bit of shading here and there. I'm not doing too much. little birdhouse colored in. I'm going to color it pink. This might be a good place to add in some more yellow. Adding these color for the leaves. A little bit right there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to add in a little bit of yellow for the flowers. Okay, so I think that's the trees. I'm gonna add a little bit of gray to this so that it looks like it's white instead of just not colored. <laughs> yeah, and then I think the last step is gonna be just adding in some um, gel pen. I think maybe I'll just use the jelly roll just this is the stardust jelly roll and so I'm just gonna go in oh I forgot to do there we go I'm just gonna go in and add in some sparkle where I think that I want sparkle 
And the nice thing about the Stardust uh, Jelly Roll, this is a clear, so um, whatever color is underneath is what's going to show through. So that's really nice. Um, I think I'm just going to trace these lines. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to speed this part up because I'll tend to add a bunch of sparkle. So I will show you guys this completed when it is all finished. So here is this page all done. I did add in a bunch of, of this uh, jelly roll, sparkly clear jelly roll. And then I did add a little bit of green to these dots right here that I hadn't done previously. So uh, kind of give you a little taste of how sparkly it is. Hopefully you guys can see all that sparkle. Uh, but yeah, so I think I will probably be able to finish this page uh, before I post this video. So I'm going to finish the background and I will post a, a picture of this at the end of the video. But let's look back and see what we worked on today. So we've got our lovely spring trees. We've got, where to go? Goodness, be nice if I was prepared. And there's our fall tree. So we've got some trees and some more trees. I'm running out of room. <laughs> <laughs> let's see what else did we do we did a little bit of work on um, this page on the tree there the branches and stuff and then a little bit of shading work right on this area right here so so yeah overall I think I think it was a fun a fun tree episode I hope you guys enjoyed it and um yeah, thanks for helping me get a little bit farther with this page and this page. And then I'm definitely going to sit and finish this one because this won't take very much longer. So thank you guys so much for watching today. Uh, next is you, T-U. Yes. I don't I'm going to guess it's unicorn, but I can't remember for sure. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching today. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>